Hey everybody, we're back. I'm still sunburnt. I'm Andy Ryan. It's Dave DeWert. I'm not sunburnt. I went to the baseball game, man. I didn't. I stayed inside where it was not hot and sunny. It was not smart on my my. Well, where were heart. you guys sitting? Like third row or? No, 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 no. We went tailgated in the morning. Oh, there you go. That's and, the and it was a noon. It was a noon game, so it was hard to find that shirts. Hurts. Sunburns. It's been a long time since I've been to a baseball game. It was fun. We lost. Except for fun. except for the fact that 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 they lost. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. It was close. I watched the last half an inning or whatever. Yeah. If that there was a poor call from an umpire in the sixth. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, See if you can figure out what game we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's two weeks ago. Uh, so yeah. So what we're gonna talk about today is, um, it's kind of you know to can continue being a thriftier mm-hmm. gamer. Playing. The, oh yeah. The easiest way to be a thrifty gamer is that when the new hotness comes out, you pick up the old hotness. You pick up the old hotness. Yeah. That is usually, usually cheaper, cheaper and better than the new hotness. Oh, well, maybe it depends on the game, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I know what you're talking about. Like, so, so say, so like Dave's playing a good example. I'm, Dave's playing Destiny. I'm playing a lot of Destiny, and I'm at this point, I'm probably still playing a lot of Destiny. And I'm playing through Halo One and Two, which is he's kind of playing the same game I am. Yes, like from what I remember, my game's play, better. <laughs> eh, not from a multiplayer standpoint, no, but well, from like a level design and game standpoint. Uh, yeah, yeah, Story I would say that. I would say that. Yeah. Except for the weird ending on the Halo weird, 2. the weird ending on two. Yeah, but um, yeah, I would say that De- Andy's basically playing the same game I am. My game just has more people in it right now. Mm-hmm. Like he can play his game all by himself, and he yep. don't have to play with nobody else. But I have to because I can't do strikes by myself. <laughs> I can't do it. I mean, it's just kind of one of those things that like. You know, if if you want to be, if you if you're a gamer, I mean, and and you find a series that you like, like uh, when I picked up Final Fantasy, the to, to be quite honest, the first Final Fantasy I ever played end to end was seven. Um, I wanted to play three, but nobody would ever buy it for my Super Nintendo, and I was all sad. <laughs> okay. I was little. This was, I mean, I bought, I got I got that game for Christmas or something one year. Um, but. That made me want to go back and play the other games, and that's yeah. what I, you know, that's why I got Origins and I got um, Chronicles, Chronicles Anthology, and and well, and that's also why I bought Chrono Trigger because mm. Chrono Trigger is basically a Final Fantasy game, right? Chrono Trigger is like the best, the best Final Fantasy game that's not a Final Fantasy game. Yep. <laughs> I mean, you got robots and and crazy space time continuum stuff, so yeah, yeah. that's some good stuff. But yeah, that, I mean, game plus it actually matters. I know. Um, but you know, so a good example is like, you know, if you're a gamer, you want stuff to play, mm-hmm. you want you want to you want to dig deep in things, uh, and you want to save your money. The new hotness is usually not the place. you It's want usually to go. sixty bucks, yeah. um, unless it's some weird rare or special edition or something that's only available to you is is like ninety. But yeah, you, rather than spending sixty bucks on a brand new game, you could get like you could go to you know your favorite used store, who's not a big mo- monstrous m- mess. Um, and you can pick up Metal Gear Solid three or mm-hmm. four for like twenty bucks. Yeah, when a good example uh, on that is when Ground Zeroes came out. Mm-hmm. I wasn't gonna buy it for forty dollars, but to scratch that itch, I played three. Again. Yeah, played through. That's Peace Walker, right? No, no. Snake that's Eater. Snake Eater. That's close. Peace Walker is the PSP one, right? Yes. Okay. One of the PSP ones. Fine then. Acid and Portable Ops are the other two. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Because Acid, Acid Two, and Portable Ops, Portable Ops Plus. Yeah. So, and, and I don't know, I just, well, like when I wanted to play a Final Fantasy-esque game and I didn't really want to sit and play 13 because I just can't bring myself to play 13 <laughs> for whatever reason, um, I borrowed Dragon Quest Eight from Andy. Yeah. And, and I played, I am at the point where you go back to Yangus's town, the one way in the south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And that's where I've... Oh, you're close to the, the bug battling. The bug battling? Yeah. They, they It's kind of, it's... It's not the best version of the bug battling. Um, in Dragon Quest VIII, the best version of the bug battling is in... But this is something Rogue, I've never heard of. Rogue Galaxy. But it's basically like they're little Pokemon-type tournaments with bugs and oh. the monsters. Okay. And so it kind of uh, opens I, up like a sub-game. I was sub going to say, game. I got the bounties. I, I ran past the dude who was like, listening to the wind. Yeah. And I got the bounties to go kill like these rare mobs, um, when, which I've probably killed three or four times mm-hmm. each already before then. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, if, if you don't want to pay a whole bunch of money for a new game, it's it's pretty mm-hmm. easy. You know, it's pretty simple 
thing that people kind of miss is you know, just buy the old version. Yeah, they, play play a version you haven't played before, or replay something that you already own. You know. Yeah. If 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 you really want to scratch that itch, you know, find out what company made it, find out what mm -hmm. designer made it, and go back and play something else. Yeah, something else that they that they have done. So. Uh, what would be a good example of that? Assuming you have something that's not just a PS3 or an Xbox 360. Um, good old games. Well, yeah, there's GOG if you have a PC mm -hmm. and you want to play like some I mean, old like here's PC a good games. example for like older PC games. You know, let's say Skyrim's coming out or um, some other giant. The new game. Elder Scrolls game comes out. Yeah, the new Elder Scrolls games comes Six out. Six comes out sometime. And you want to you you don't want to spend. Sixty dollars. You know, well, and it it's yet. also it's also a, a good way to like if you're interested in a game like um, with Bloodborne, right? Mm -hmm. If Bloodborne's coming out and you kind of have interest, but you've never played Dark Souls or Demon Souls, you can pick one of those two games up for, for less like, than ten bucks yeah. or ten bucks ish. Um, and if you're a Plus subscriber, you already own Demon Souls if you picked it up a year ago. Yes. Um, but let's say so let's say there's a big Western RG, RPG. Let's here we go. Good example. Dragon Quest Inquisition. Yeah. Not Dragon Quest Inquisition. Dragon Age Inquisition. Dragon Quest Inquisition. That is a completely that is, different game. That is a different game. That is a very different game. Odds puff, are... Puff, puff. That's right. Um, puff, puff. Anyway. So, <laughs> so let's say Dragon Age Inquisition is coming out. You want to play a dragon... You, you don't want to throw down $60. You want to see what this whole Dragon Age thing is but, about. But you want to like... You're like, okay, well, so what else am I going to do? Well, on good old games, for the cost of... Dragon Age Inquisition, sixty dollars, fifty dollars, mm -hmm. whatever not. You can get all of the Infinity Engine games, so you can oh, yeah, get yeah, yeah. you can get a whole Baldur's bunch of Gate complete, Baldur's yeah. Gate two complete, Icewind Dale complete, well, Icewind Dale two complete, yeah. and Planescape Torment. And right there, that is like a that year's is, worth of yeah, games. that is like a years of gaming. Those are uh, like a hundred. I was gonna each. say, I was gonna say, go see if you can find a copy of Origins for like ten bucks for your PS3. Mm. Um, don't get. Dragon Age 2, unless you really want to play Mass Effect with swords. Mm. I mean... Or that's a good example. Dragon Age Inquisition comes out, go buy the Mass Effect collection. Is that is it going to be a more Mass Effect-y game? Is, is it it's Inquisition? Supposed, it's supposed to be halfway between the two. Okay. Because, I, I mean, they did have... Because it, it was a Bioware game. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess you could play KOTOR if you really wanted to. KOTOR is like a, a decent... Mechanically is very similar to that game. Now, mm -hmm. granted... Space stuff in the Star Wars universe versus high fantasy is a little mm -hmm. different, but um, mechanically those games are very, very similar, right? With yeah. the, the 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 good and bad karma versus the light and dark side of the force and yeah. all that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's I mean, if you really want to talk about karma, I mean, you could go even further back, Ultima Four, Quest could, of the Avatar, you could just like see Ultima. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I think a lot of people these days, because it happened, to, it happened to Dave and I. Dave and I both got into gaming, you know, started in the Nintendo era. Mm -hmm. We started really gaming hard in the PlayStation era. I was going to say, yeah, like late middle school, early high school. Yeah. So the problem was, though, that it wasn't until years later after in college or mm -hmm. after college that we started going, okay, well, let's go back and let's play things like Might and Magic. Yeah. And um, Ultima mm -hmm. and uh, the Gold Box, SSI Gold Box games. And those kind of old yeah, RPGs, yeah. RPGs age... Fairly well, fairly because, well, like very well, uh, uh, compared to something like a a Call of Duty, like a like a Wolfenstein, or yeah, yeah, something like that. Like, because when I bought my PS2, it's like third time. Um, <laughs> I've had three PS2s and I only have one now. Um, I got like uh, Medal of Honor Rising Sun. Mm -hmm. That game is atrocious yes. by comparison to you know pretty much everything that comes out now, and it probably wasn't that great anyway. So, you know, by, by comparison, a, you know, PS1 era RPG still has a great story. Yeah. I mean, and odds I mean, like are it's, like it's sprite-based, so it's, it brings back that nostalgic feeling anyway. So yeah. Something like Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Mm hmm You know. Yeah. That it, will continue to be good. That will continue to be playable. If, if a game has solid gameplay mechanics, the story can be kind of meh. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, if, if it's fun to play. Like Half-Life is still playable. System Shock 2, still very playable. Well, I don't say they're unplayable. They'll run amazingly on everything out now. Yes. You just have to run it in, like, a, an emulator almost for Windows 95 or 2000. Yeah. Um, DOSBox. DOSBox. Well, that's, that's for playing, like, old games. Yeah. So, like, a really good example of this stuff is, like, as you, as you dig deeper into these things, you can kind of start feeling out what your tastes are. Mm hmm You know? So... A good, a good resource is Hardcore Gaming 101, because they just do exhaustive 
um, articles on like the history of Ultima, the history mm -hmm. of Might and Magic. Here's all the Castlevania information you could ever want to know. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. It's a lot of Castlevania stuff. Actually, I bought their book. I bought I would Hardcore Gaming 101 Castle Castlevania Guide or something like it's called. I would and it goes. It has like three pages on have it. They, have they done uh, Have they done the Metal Gear and the um, Killzone series yet? Because those mm -hmm. have really convoluted. Oh well. <laughs> Convoluted stories. Uh, they've probably done Metal Gear. I don't know. The Kill Zone is their flavor. It's not old enough yet. But it's kind of one of those things. Is like, so you can say, you know, and the, a good example is if you, if you stick to games that have, this is this is kind of be be a cop out, but since Dave and I have a, a pretty good grasp of the second edition A D and D rules. Yeah. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons that, rules. That's Baldur's Gate. <laughs> yeah. We, it's it's not hard for people like us to then jump back like I'm playing Icewind Dale mm -hmm. I've never I never played Icewind Dale when it first came out yeah um, Icewind Dale came out right before Baldur's Gate 2 like months before Baldur's Gate yeah. 2 and I was just kind of like uh, uh Baldur's Gate 2 is coming out I'm gonna hold on for that uh, now I'm going back and playing Icewind Dale I really love it it's really easy for mm -hmm. me to jump back in understand how the magic system works what yeah. Thacko means um, I, had a, I had a huge a funny thing is I found a ring the other day that was a Plus one to Thacko, and I was like, oh, Thacko. Oh, I miss you. Because a plus one to Thacko actually moves your Thacko number down instead of up. <sighs> Thanks, D&D. It's one of those things. But because of that, like, common knowledge, like, it's very easy for me to jump into something like Might and Magic, mm -hmm. which is based off of D&D rules. Really easy for me to jump into something like Ultima, which is also based off D&D rules. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of like once you understand Mario, it's not hard to play Any Sonic. other platformer, yeah. You know? Move left and jump. Okay. Yes. Or move right and jump. So if you're like a new gamer and you played New Super Mario Brothers and you're like, oh, I want to find more of this stuff, mm -hmm. there's more of that stuff out there. It's yeah. not necessarily named Mario. Yeah. No, there's a lot of platforming games. Like, uh, what was it? Rocket Knight. Rocket Knight. Rocket Knight would be the first place I would tell someone to go. If you had a Genesis, yes. If you had a Genesis. Well, actually, didn't they, didn't they make a... Sparkster. Sparkster was the Rocket Knight. For the uh, Super Nintendo, I was gonna say. Well, no, didn't they? Didn't they make a reissue they recently did. of of one of those two games? And it's Sparkster Rocket Knight Adventures. And that's on the PS. It's not a reissue. It's a, it's like update. Okay. It's on the PSN. I was gonna thought. I was gonna say because that sounds really familiar, and I don't know. But why. like, it also helps that like Dave and I came. We grew, grew up, up with this stuff. Like grew we, up in an era of emulators, so that it wasn't at all hard to find. Oh no! Like the classic version of a game. I mean. Even when, even when I still only had a Super Nintendo, there were games I wanted to play um, that I couldn't because I couldn't find the cart or I couldn't, you know, mm -hmm. um, I couldn't get it. It was too expensive because, you know, versions of Breath of Fire for the PS or for the Super Nintendo were not cheap nope. back in the day and probably still not now. Um, so, you know, downloading that two or three meg file on AOL took hours, but it was totally yes. worth it because... <laughs> But games um, like, you know, now you have a lot more resources. You have the virtual yeah. console. You have things like Good Old yeah. Games. Which I, Good Old Games is a freaking godsend to me. Because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, last weekend I was digging through my parents' attic and found a CD full of my old... A binder um, full of your old discs. But Some of my old discs. Mm -hmm. And in there was the uh, Treasures of the Savage Frontier, mm -hmm. Gateway to the Savage Frontier, and Pools of Darkness from the Gold Box games, yep. which are great. So then I had to spend the rest of my afternoon messing around in DOSBox to get those things to run correctly. Yeah. And then got them to run and then figured out, oh, wait, no, Andy, because you were an idiot when you were in seventh grade and threw away all the manuals. Now you, you now know. no longer, you, when it says journal entry number five, you now have no clue what that says. So then I had to go out online and, and find journal PDFs entry. of the oh. journal entries. So I kind of play it in like a little window up here and the journal entry is down here. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Good Old Games takes care of all that for you. They give you the manuals. They give you everything. Yeah, and they're they like, do. here, ten dollars. It's Baldur's Gate two plus the awesome expansion yep. pack plus desktops plus a soundtrack album plus everything you're going to need. We used to call them feelies. You know, you would open mm -hmm. up a. I always remember you. Uh, I used to have. Uh, I came on five, five and a quarter, five and a quarter floppy, or is it three and a half, five and a quarter. Final Core is the really big floppy one. The really big one. The floppies that are actually floppy. Um, it came on five, five and a quarter floppies, which was probably about 10 megabytes. Um, and. No, no, I don't think it was that much. But anyway, go ahead. Wasn't, weren't five and a quarter 2.2? I, I want to. I don't think so. Anyway, and it was, uh, 
War in Middle Earth, the cool thing was when you opened it up, it had this giant fold out Middle Earth map that I had yeah. forever on parchment paper, ink, uh, lithograph inked. So it wasn't like printed, it was like screened on like a t-shirt. And the cool thing was that was their copy protection hmm. because they basically say, you know, it had a, a, a yeah. normal grid, a one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. E. And they'd be like, okay, tell us the city in block A, E that starts with an F. Or and you would go there and be like, oh, it's this A3 one. A3F, yeah. Yeah. That's weird. You know, what region is in, you know, segment D5? Yeah. Oh, that's Mordor. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you must go to D6. <laughs> where, where are we going? So it was, that was their copy protection, but because they, you know, and a lot of games did this, you know, I had tons of cloth maps. It seemed like every freaking game came with a cloth map. Or something, yeah. Now when Skyrim came with a cloth map, I like pulled it out and was like rubbing it against my face. Like, it's oh, like, oh, it's so special. It's back. You know, my... Uh, but it's not really. My Daggerfall came with a cloth map. Yeah. Um, oh, Daggerfall. I never got you to work. Lands of Lore came with a cloth map and a compass. Um, <laughs> no r rhyme or reason why. Why would you need it? I mean, I guess. But it was just the type of thing that they would just put in there to like get you more immersed in the game. Especially in a time when it was like, you know, text on a tandy monitor. And yeah, I mean that was that was the thing that you you really you kind of needed something to to kind of say okay this is this is the world this kind of gives me a direction since I don't have this on the screen I have to have it. Yeah, physically. like Warwind's the human onslaught onslaught I believe came with an entire cardboard cutout that you put on top of your keyboard that like did all labeled all the hotkeys mm -hmm. and then also gave you on the borders like. Quick stats for the oh, different cool. units. Yeah, but what and if you had a non-standard keyboard? And you're screwed. Well, Aww. in those days, there wasn't such a thing as a non-standard keyboard. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah. So, good old games kind of replicates that by giving you all this other stuff. And a lot of their stuffs on sale half the time too. Yeah, that's, that's the other good thing about good old games is two weeks ago, a week or so ago, two weeks ago, they had a um, an anniversary sale. The final day of the anniversary mm -hmm. sale, I picked up System Shock Two for two dollars. <laughs> okay. So let's just say one more time, System Shock Two for two bucks. For two I bucks, it. I get it. Like, and the modding community is alive and well for that, and you can yes. totally get like a super upresed version of that. Now, granted, it's oh, I think still going to look dated. But even on my crappy computer, I think it runs at some ungodly resolution. Yeah. Um, I mean, like better textures and models and things oh, yeah, like yeah. that. It'll look more like Half Life Two. Yeah. Which is good. The uh, uh, all the the first six Might and Magic games. Mm-hmm. So, that it's right lot, there, that is a lot. That is like a might. summer of gaming. That is, or two. Um, the only problem is a lot of them run in a DOS box shell, and you're playing the older version of it, so it's not going to yeah. look great. Yeah. No. But once again, it's not really about the looks. Like you, when you when you play older games, you have to kind of divorce yourself a little bit F from the fact that this game the, is. It, you know, you have to you have to go. Okay, well, this game is not. This running was originally an Apple II game. So. Yeah, yeah. It's like when I was watching my sister and and whatever play um, Ultima, the original mm -hmm. Ultima, and I'm like, wow, we have come so far in twenty something years. You know, but the original Ultima is still good, like for what it is. Yeah, it's still a fun little exploration. If, if you're thing. out there right now and you're just like, there's no way I'm ever gonna do this. Blah 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 blah. There's graphics are so important. It needs to look great. I need to be immersed. Blah blah blah. blah. There will be a game that will break down that barrier. Once it's broken down, yeah. you will start like going out and seeing other things and getting getting into it to the point where like Zork is a really great game. It's all text. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, you won't take you won't take long to play Zork, but um, yeah. Uh, but to be totally honest, I did not buy all of the first six Might and Magics. One again, four dollars for the first six Might and yeah. Magics. I really only bought them for Might and Magic four and five and six. So the last three. Yeah, four and five bundle will install and bundle themselves together into this thing called World of Zine, and it is awesome. It's all one big game, basically. Yeah, one big game. Um, and then I also, for $4, Icewind Dale complete. So that's hmm. when I've been starting to play Icewind Dale. And it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, unlike Baldur's Gate, which has a heavy emphasis on story and character interaction, or Planescape Torment, which has an un godly emphasis on character interaction and story. Oh, God. Torment was good, though, because you, I mean, from from what I remember, it's been a very long My time. My favorite thing about Torment is you don't have to, you can go through the entire game of Torment without ever fighting. Yeah. You can talk your way out of everything. If your charisma's high enough. Yep. Um, or, or the floaty skull thing doesn't I love piss the floaty you off. Skull. 
Well, does, does he have Mal? a name? I think his name's Mal or something or like Mort that. Or something Mort. like that. Mort the, the floating Mort. skull. Mort the floating skull. You eventually find his body, which is an awesome quest. Anyway, uh, poor Mort. Icewind Dale did not, it differentiated itself like, okay, we're not doing that. This is going to be like an old school, like the gold box games. Go to the town, get the, um, get the quest, go off to the, the quest site and go through that dungeon. Yeah. Which Baldur's Gate really only had about four dungeons. If you had the expansion pack, it had three more. Yeah. It wasn't very deep. It but, I mean, it wasn't It wasn't. But that very, wasn't like, what the game was doing. No, it was telling a story. Yeah. And the story didn't involve you going into a bunch Baldur's of Baldur's Gate 2 had even less of a huge, like, Baldur's Gate 2 expansion pack had a really huge dungeon and another really huge dungeon that added on to it. Mm-hmm. But Baldur's Gate 2, that wasn't what it was doing. Yeah. But Icewind Dale is what it's doing. Like, I'm only at the first real dungeon. Mm-hmm. And it's like one, two, three, four, five, six levels, basically. There's one main level, and then and you then go you off just, to all the other yeah. ones. So I'm now down to the deepest part of the dungeon, which it takes me back. Yeah. Rolling dice behind a screen. <laughs> if only that really worked in Icewind Dale. <laughs> you could just roll your dice on the screen. Yes. Just that would be so awesome. You click a D20. Roll, roll, roll. One. Oh, you're dead. But, you know, because it's because we have that common language. You know, you play a lot of these old shooters, you're not going to be able to do WSAD and the mouse. But you can set it up to do that. Yeah, well... Yeah, because I want to say... It, at I mean, go and go to buy... I mean, imagine Duke Nukem's probably five bucks, maybe ten. More, than, yeah, more or less Probably comes with the expansion pack. Probably. That is and worth it, way more... That's worth ten dollars. Like, way more yeah, than, like... Forever. Fifty percent of the games that you will find at GameStop for ten dollars. Yeah. The games on Good Old Games are actually worth what they say they are. Well, the good I mean, thing about Good Old Games, when you sign up for an account, they give you a bunch of games free. Mm-hmm. So that can kind of, like... You know, if you've never played something... You get like if you've never played a point and click adventure, they give you one for free. Yeah, you know they give you yeah. uh, Beneath the Steel Sky. I think, you know, if you've never played an old school computer RPG, they actually give you Ultima Four for free, which is the best Ultima game. Hmm. I might have to go sign up for GOG. I think I have an account, on, or maybe that's Humble. Maybe I have a Humble account. Mm. But I mean, Humble is also a really good way because they get you know. Yeah, for, for even better for like fifteen bucks, you can you know usually it's like okay, well you get these. Four games, no matter what you give us. Yeah. And then you can get like three more if you give us more than seven bucks, and you get three more or two more if you give us more than fifteen bucks or whatever. Yeah. And then you can just, you know, change the slider to I want all the money to go to charity or the developer or I want to split it evenly or whatever. I usually every time I bought anything on Humble, it's most of it goes to charity and most and then a little bit of it goes to the developer. Yeah. Um, and you know, the publisher screwed those guys. And I can't wait until I'm like and it's also coming back to like things like PlayStation Now. You know, once that subscription model that they keep telling us is going to happen happens, yeah. you'll be able to go back and play these older games. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm sitting there thinking about trying to trying some stuff on now, but I, I'm really just I'm still so deterred by you know the fact that it's going to cost me twenty bucks to play this game for ninety days. You know? Well, you've already played it online. You know that it works. Until I know, I'm not saying that the system doesn't work. I'm just like I don't know if I really want to like pay thirty dollars for a game I'm only gonna have access to for you know thirty yeah. days or whatever. Oh, I mean that's you know that everyone gets to answer that question on their own. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's a game like the Orange Box, you know, because I just I looked over, yeah. I saw it. You know, you're gonna play through Half Life Two and Half Life Two episodes in less than a week. Oh yeah, you could. And you probably play through Portal in less than a week. So do you really need ninety days? No, you probably need that no. thirty day option. Well, I already have all those games anyway, but. But I'm just saying, you know, like, there was a Ratchet and Clank game that I hadn't played on there, and I yeah. know I'm probably gonna. You're gonna play power it through that whole game, but you would power through it in less than a week. So you buy yeah. the eight dollar version, and you have it for a week, and you're good. Yes. So, but yeah, I mean, and now is the same way. Like, you can pay ten bucks, play this game for a week, and if you beat it, great. If you don't, well, you could probably spend another five or ten dollars, and you can. You and know, they save your 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 save your games progress in the cloud. is saved, so you're you're covered there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of those things, like, we always say, I always say, unless you really, really want a game, hold on for the Game of the Year edition. Mm-hmm. Hold off until it's cheaper. Hold yeah. off, because you can get it cheap. You're going to be able to get it cheaper, you know, and you'll probably like it better if you got it cheap. Yeah. You know, once again, $4 for all six Might and Magics, even though I really only wanted four, Three of five, them. and six, like, that's a great deal. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Like, because those games are each, like, 20 or 30 hours long, easily, right? Yeah. So... And then you got the replayability of choosing a different class or whatever. So now, so. like, the biggest thing for me is, like, do I want to start... 
Do I want to start Might and Magic? Or do, I, do I start Might and Magic 1 and then carry the same party all the way through? Ooh, you could. Because that's one of the things with the gold box games that you could always do. And you can do it in Might and Magic. You can kind of do it in Ultima a little bit. Ooh, Although Ultima to me, like, start play. You're going to be really all, sad if somebody Ultima just four. explodes, though. Yeah. It's like, oh no, my ranger I've had since Ultima 1 is dead. Now I have to start all or Might and Magic 1. Now I have to start all over. Like I do, the problem with my problem with good old games is that it doesn't. They used to have an app that auto updated. Like if they updated the installer for a game you bought, they would notify you. Yeah. And it would say, okay, we're going to reinstall this. Um, they don't do that anymore on the new app. So, I have my Baldur's Gate party mm -hmm. s sitting in a save file somewhere. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, when when Baldur's Gate two complete is on sale because yeah. I bought that game enough, I need to get it on sale. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring my party forward. I'll, I'm going to finish off the last part of Baldur's Gate 1. And you just bring my party forward. Bring forward to the throne of ball and all that. Yeah. 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 Those games. <laughs> and also, you know, a good example is there's also games out there like Neverwinter Nights, mm -hmm. which for $10, it's Neverwinter Nights plus all their expansion pla packs. Yeah. And then you have the, like, literally library of campaigns that, that people, people wrote have made. For it. Yeah. Because it had a pretty in-depth level editor, right? Yes, they actually the the entire game was made with their level editor. They made their level editor and then made the entire game yeah, with it. Yeah, it's like which it's is like why the main campaign. If you if you buy Neverwinter Nights, I'm gonna two things. First thing, buy Neverwinter Nights if you have a computer. You'll really like it if you like role-playing games. Two, if you buy Neverwinter Nights, you can probably skip the main campaign. Yeah, skip forward to the first expansion pack, Shadows of Undertide. It levels up your character a little bit. You don't have to start with a level one character, yeah, which is yeah. kind of hard in Dungeons and Dragons, because it's just you and a hireling. This isn't like Baldur's Gate, where you have a whole a party, party of, that you of can three or four guys. Yeah. Yes. So skip forward to Shadows of Undertide. Play Shadows of Undertide is a pretty good story, and then play the actual really good campaign, which is Hordes of the Underdark. Yeah. Hordes of the Underdark is freaking awesome. It is. It's been a long time since good. I even thought about playing Neverwinter. Yeah. But yeah, that was the first thing that cop, kind of popped into my mind. You know, for example, ten dollars also Neverwinter Two, like yeah. the best story. Well, I don't want to say that. One of the best stories. One of the best stories in computer games. The best story in computer games is probably a toss-up between Baldur's Gate series and I'm gonna go with Ultima Underworld. Okay. The Ultima Underworld games. I see that? Because they're how they're. That Stygian Abyss game. Mm -hmm. I played Stygian Abyss. How old was I when I first met you? Like 11, 12? Sixth grade. Yeah. So I played Shadows of... Uh, not Shadows of Modern Times. Ultima Underworld, the Stygian Abyss, when I was 12 or 13. Yeah. And it deals with, like, pretty deep questions in a very interesting way. Like, if you like mm -hmm. Bioshock, mm -hmm. Ultima Underworld is its direct ancestor. Because Ultima Underworld was the group was this group that had Warren Spector in it. Mm -hmm. Warren Spector went on to make System Shock. Yeah. Then he worked with Ken Levine. Then Ken Levine made System Shock Two. Then Ken Levine, after System Shock Two, made Bioshock, Bioshock, Bioshock Infinite, all yeah. that other stuff. So that through that thread flows through that whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like mm -hmm. if you really like Deus Ex game, that's you can thank Ultima Underworld. Yeah. It's amazing how many like. I mean, you can draw... Pretty much, if you like RPGs at all, like right now, you have Ultima to thank for it. Like, going all the way back. Yeah, well, I mean, Ultima, like you said, Ultima was on the Apple II. Yeah, Ultima, so like, did... It is one of the oldest like, RPG series in the game. Ultima the, codified certain things in the RPG genre that you still feel in today, like the overworld map, the dungeon maps, you know, a fight command, and, you know, it was even a though... A leveling it was, system. And it wasn't like fight, that. it was attack, but... Well, yeah, but it was well, the leveling system that kind of came from D and D, but the way that the they leveling system in Ultima. Well, that's the thing is like Ultima. If you want to go really far back, everyone owes a huge debt of gratitude in video games to Dungeons and Dragons. But well, yeah, Ultima's leveling system is not. It's one of the few things it has that is not taken from D and D, because you have to buy. You buy levels. You buy upgrades for cash. Um, that's okay, because you need those levels so you can go to space. Yeah, but like a good example, if you like Bioshock Infinite. Pull out, and, and if you have a PC or a laptop that will check email, it will definitely play System Shock 2. Go to Good Old Games, buy System Shock 2, you'll really, you'll thank me. You know, buy Deus Ex, you'll thank me. You know, yeah. just realize that the but only thing that we continue to iterate on and continues to get better is graphics. Yeah. So that when you play these older games, you're just not going to have that. Yeah. yeah, and that's, 
And that, I think that is the big thing that deters a lot of people, especially like, because you've seen that like uh, teen C whatever, like the, the it's a, a web to a, oh, a yeah, YouTube yeah, yeah, yeah. series where like uh, yeah, where teens the explore Nintendo, it. Uh, yeah, yeah the they Game gave Boy. they gave the nest to to a bunch of you know like 17, 18 The one year girl old from um, Game of Thrones Game was of Thrones. on there. She was like, like, oh, I thought it was gonna be me. I know what these are. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a thing, and they're like, is it a VCR? Because they were opening it up. And, oh, it's a game console. Okay. I like when they were like, Should get it to work, and they had to blow in the cartridge. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, you blow in it? Why? <laughs> I don't understand. But yeah, no. So, but, but the I, big I, deterrent is is graphics. The games don't look as good as they used, you know, as they do as now. They do now. And, and, you but know. you know, I feel like if you, there Damn will be that kids. game for everybody yeah. that breaks down the, the graphics barrier that you're like, yeah. okay, this game is awesome and it doesn't look cutting edge. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, for me, that was a real easy thing because I was playing PC games. I had an old busted PC all the time. So that I had to play, if I wanted to play a D&D &D game, I had to play an older D&D &D game, mm -hmm. you know, because the new ones just wouldn't run. Yeah. Thankfully, because of that, I missed all of the shitty D&D &D games that came out in the early 90s. You know, your Descent to Undermountain, uh, Blood and Magic. It doesn't um, mean that you didn't rebuy them later. It's true. I mean, so true. You, you have two Intellivision ones sitting up there. The Intellivision ones aren't bad. The Dungeons and Dragons Worlds of the Eternal Sun for the Genesis is actually pretty good. It's actually better than the Might and Magic for the Genesis. But, yeah. Anywho. Um, so, for, for us, like, jumping over that graphical barrier is not that much of a No, a because hindrance. we, I mean, it, it, it's more of a nostalgic look for us. We're like, oh, this was so much fun back in the day. Yes. And then you play through, like, five, six hours of it. And but, like, if you've never played Gateway to the Savage Frontier, yeah. you should play Gateway to the Savage Frontier. Like, Indeed. the story is good. Um, the Savage Frontier games were made by the people that would go on to be Obsidian Entertainment mm -hmm. and Stormfront Studios. Um, Stormfront and or Stormwind, Stormwind or Stormfront. Anyway, basically, Stormwind from, is a people is from a Bi thing. from Bioware left Bioware. Mm -hmm. People from Stormfront left Stormfront and became Obsidian, yeah. who would go on to do things like Fallout New Vegas, um, this the Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah. What was the second one? Sith Lords. Um, they would go on to write the awesome script for Neverwinter Nights 2. Um, and they're also doing something new lately. But anyway, so then these people still work at those companies. Mm, well, or the, those people still work together probably at different companies because yes. certain ones don't exist anymore, especially after this last round of publisher closer, closures yes. and things like that. I so. really, I'm in, in my mind, there's a, there's... Will Wright, Warren Spector, and uh, Richard Garriott are all going to get together and rebuy the Origin Systems name mm -hmm. and start re-releasing things. Oh, buy yeah. it back from EA. Yeah, that'd be nice. Although apparently Ultima Online is still running. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> I mean, who who would... I mean, the people love it. I mean, the original EverQuest is still running. Yeah. So, you know... So, I mean, these, these things, especially like single-player story-driven games, yes, you're going to need to read... But yeah. sorry, that's something that needs to happen anyway. You probably should. And actually, to be honest, like playing RPGs, like because I hated reading when I was little. Yeah, I hated it. Oh. I absolutely hated it. Yeah, but playing I'm RPGs was the only way of, to get the story. Yeah, like I'm a I would, good reader because of RPGs. And that's yeah, because of Final Fantasy and and things like that. I was like, okay, well, I can read a lot faster now because I have because I want to haul ass through the story. And I have a the, very distinct memory of um, third grade. Uh, the teacher like going over words with us and mm. she like asking us to read aloud and I don't remember what the book was but it had a bunch of fantasy terms in it that I didn't stumble with at all I was like oh it's a dwarf it's an elf blah 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 I think it was probably like night before Christmas or something that's the only thing I could think of that would have elf in it and she was she came up to me after class she was like oh why do you you're a really good reader I'm I was like, like yeah well you know all that stuff is in The Hobbit and in um, um, Bard's Tale um, video and game. all this and she's like what are those? I was like, oh, they're all video games that I have. That I have to, yeah. I mean, I have to read. I can't. It's not, there's the no day, audio. There was no like, audio. So it was like, I gotta. I have to read the stuff on the there. screen. You know? Yeah. That's, I'm writing. really good at math in my head because of Dungeons and Dragons. Thanks, D&D. &D. Yeah. D&D. <laughs> like, &D, reading and math. Good, good, good skills to have. So, but if you can get over those first humps, if you can get over the hump of, I don't, the, the biggest hump you need to get over to enjoy, I would say the cornucopia of video gaming mm -hmm. is, be, be truthful with yourself and yep. just be like, I'm not going to listen to the advertisers and the hype machine, and I don't need to have the latest thing yeah. right when it comes out. You know, I'm just going to, like, go enjoy something that will be enjoyable. Yeah. 
Well, I, I mean, there's there's something to, to say, like, because of this show specifically that we do. I, I like to play games that come out recently, so I have something that's relevant to talk about. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, there's always something, you know, there's always something to going back and, and like, rereading a good book or watching a mm-hmm. movie that you really liked or playing a game that you liked back in the day. Like, it's if it was enjoyable then and it is still enjoyable now, I don't mm-hmm. think that diminishes its value to you. Yeah, and, and as a younger gamer, you should go out and try and find these things and... and, mm-hmm. and dig deep get that depth yeah so that when someone goes oh you're just a kid you can be like no i'm not like have you played ultima 4 like do you know what the, the virtues are and they'll be like oh well blah, blah, blah. call of duty yeah new you know basically you can be just a kid but you can have depth yeah you know I, i've talked to a lot of people that are my age that are, haven't played anything older than 2000 started playing video games in and yeah they, they in, like in the year totally 2000 feel like or 2002 like, yeah like their opinion is somehow more valuable than someone who you know You've doesn't play games while, now yeah. but had played games back in the day you know play mm. the old lucas arts adventure games yeah well like my my sister's girlfriend she doesn't play anything except like apple or like windows 2000 games and below like mm. she she doesn't play anything that came out after the year 2000 really well yeah well the good the other good example of all this is that by now, the, the wheat has been separated from the chaff. Yeah, so we know what's good and bad out of those. Yeah, so, like, there's a reason Good Old Games isn't going after Descent to Undermountain, but they did, you know, go after yeah. Baldur's Gate 2. Yeah. Because well, you probably don't want to play Descent to Undermountain. And Baldur's Gate 2 is, you know, just badass all around. Yes. There's there's a reason they've kind of separated. Now, there, occasionally there's stuff on Good Old Games, and I'm like, you guys put this on here just so you could have all of the Might and Magic games or yeah. all of this or that. You this know, is a completionist game. This is a completionist game. You don't want it. You don't really want this game in here, but it's here because yes. all the other ones are here. Because you're because someone's gonna go. Well, why shouldn't I play one first? Mm. I would say actually, you can probably skip most ones in the world. The only one that I would say is is tantamount is Baldur's Gate one. Yeah. Half Life well, one. Uh, yeah, and it's because you can ca- well you carry your character forward in Half Life either way, but yeah. in Baldur's Gate you can carry your party forward and stuff like that. So. So yeah, dig deep, man. You don't need to have the latest and greatest to have fun, yeah. and that's the best. That's why we game. We but, game to have fun. But if that's if that's the way you want to, like, we're not saying you know that the way that we game is is the best way to do it, right? Like, it works for us. And if you're wanting to do something new to if, you on the you cheap, o- if you only want to play the latest sixty dollar Mountain Dew soaked shooter fest, by all means, go right ahead. That's that's your right. You totally have fun doing that. Well, Dave and I both bought brand new shooters, Mountain Dew soaked shooters. Like we we've, we've had fun with them, you know. All we're saying is, there's more there, out there. There will be a moment where you will want to go somewhere else, and instead of squashing that, mm-hmm. spend, you know, ten bucks. Spend ten bucks, and and even if you don't, Love like to, to me, like ten bucks is the cutoff mark, right? Yeah, if it's more than ten bucks, it's probably like, and in, in, it's a little bit more of a of a, an, investment an investment than some people. Like for me, like if it's less than ten bucks, even if, good example, Might and Magic, even if I never get around to playing four and five, which is actually the next thing on my rocket docket after Icewind Dale, but even if I never get around to doing that, even though I really wanted to, four dollars isn't that much of an outputting. No, like that's a burger. Yeah, that's half your lo- well, that's about half your lunch depending on where you go. Yeah. Especially around here. No shit. Um, Stuff's expensive in Waldo. Why you do this? Sorry. So anyway, so but like that's the thing. Like you know, don't squash the itch. You know, don't listen to the naysayers who say gaming is only on the PS4, the Xbox yeah. One, or like a super high-powered murder rig of a computer. <laughs> murder rig. <laughs> you know, I think like a lot of this. I think is I I think Minecraft. You know, yeah, I mean, Minecraft because is Minecraft is bringing so many kids in that aren't going to be fine tuned into it needs to have sixty frames a second, it yeah. needs to have this, it needs to have that, it needs you know realistic faces, blah 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 blah. Minecraft, you know, if you play Minecraft, I love you, that. You will have no problem playing Daggerfall, and mm-hmm. Daggerfall came out in nineteen ninety four, and yep. it looks pretty much exactly the same. Yep, yep. And, and, yeah, and and I think Minecraft shows. I mean, even with the whole Microsoft buying. Did they buy Mojang or did they just buy the IP? They bought Mojang. They bought Mojang and then Notch went, I'm out. Yes. I can't I can't deal with this. It's too much craziness. I'm out. Yes. Like the guy went from being an unemployed Java programmer to being one of the biggest indie developers on the planet yep. in like two years. Yep. Um but you know, with people Minecraft are pissed at him. I don't ever understand why people are pissed. I'm a, I always get very weird when people get very, very angry at game developers. Because um, all they're doing is building something for you. I think I think some people don't understand that Notch stepped away from Mojang 
after Microsoft bought it because he doesn't like his life he's, changed yeah, in such like a way a that person. he doesn't really want it to be what it is now. Yeah, yeah. he wants to step away from it and and maybe just like sit on is, his mountain of cash for yeah. the next 20 years. To me, years. that was the weirdest thing about Gamersgate was people like bad-mouthing Tim Schafer. And like to me, it was like, you guys do realize that like games wouldn't be what games are without Tim Schafer, right? Yeah. That like, like, and oh the, God. People were like, oh, yeah, right, sure. You know, no, he's one of the most important people to gaming history. In the last 20 years, yeah. Like, Borderlands is funny because Tim Schafer wrote funny games back in the 90s. Yeah. And showed that you could do that and it could be profitable. Yeah. When is Grim Fandango coming out? I have no clue. God damn it. I want it on my Vita. I'm sure it's probably on Good Old Games. (laughs) Psychonauts. No, actually, I don't think it is. I don't don't think they ever were able to do that. Oh, well. I think this would be the only time, like, this is the the next time that you can actually buy that game is whenever it comes out again. Mm. Because I don't think Good Old Games has it for whatever reason. Anyway, go to Humble Bundle, go to Good Old Games, go to your local buy shop. You I mean, know, really. You go could, to the virtual console. Or, or you know, I, and I know you're not going to be happy about this. The but PSN. Steam sales are pretty good ways to get some games for cheap, too. Yeah, but the, the, and usually those are older games. Old. Well, no, there's some pretty old stuff on Steam now, too. Well, yeah, but I'm like, old stuff on Steam is like stuff. A year that, or two? Yeah, stuff that has come out since, like, the oldest thing on Steam to me is like stuff that came out since I was in college. Mm. But like good old games goes even farther back. Humble Bundle will go even further back. Well, I'll do some looking, but I, I'm pretty sure there's some games from the mid '90s on Steam. Mm. So, um, but yeah, you know, it, it, game how you want a game. But if you want to try something, if you want to see like where don't it's, don't squash that voice that says I want something different. And you know what? If if, if you really like Scratch a genre, that itch. if you really like a genre of game. Maybe go back and see how those games started, and you can appreciate mm-hmm. how far they've come. As you know, from from the days of of text parser, and or the PS one shooters, you know that <laughs> where you you all you had was the D pad and your buttons and the triggers, and that's pretty much how you had to yep. look and move and all that. You know, just to appreciate like how far shooters have come. I mean, from like the PS1 a good example or, is like if you re- if you're really into um, Halo and mm-hmm. Destiny and all this stuff, go back and play Alien Trilogy. On the PlayStation One, go back and oh, play yeah, Doom. Yeah. You know, because those games still hold up. Pretty good, yeah. And how still uh, Alien Trilogy to me is still scary. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good though. Yeah, they're pretty good games. So. Well, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Hopefully, I won't be as sunburned. No, you'll still be. Awesome pasta.